Hi guys, Pete the Wargamer here, back with another Flames of War painting tutorial. In this video, I'll be tackling some of our British paratroopers, like those found in the British Starter Force, using some paint from the Vallejo range. Before we start painting, we first of all need to apply a primer so that later layers of paint adhere to the miniature surface. It doesn't matter too much which color you go for, but I have opted to use a mixture of Vallejo's gray and black airbrush primers to help paint the various mid-tones of the miniature. You will also note that I'm painting MI Infantry in a batch of five models, which will be grouped together onto a single base in the end. To make holding these small miniatures much easier, I have attached them to a lollipop stick with a small bit of super glue that can easily be removed later on. The first area that I'll be painting with will be the Denison Smock, and for this we'll be starting off with a base coat of green ochre. As with all the base coats that I'll be painting in this video, you will want to mix this paint with some water in roughly equal quantities to make the paint easier to work with. Don't worry about getting perfect coverage with your first layer, as this is why we watered down our paint. After applying your first layer, allow the paint to dry before applying a second over the top. This layering technique will give us a much smoother finish whilst avoiding the possibility of obscuring details by applying the paint too thickly. Using the same thinning and layering technique that we used to base coat the smock, I'll next be painting the trousers and water bottle cover using some English uniform. The next paint that I'll be using is Russian uniform, and this will be applied in two ways. First of all, we need to begin work on the camouflage pattern of the smock. Using some Russian uniform, apply a series of narrow, irregular stripes across the surface of the fabric. Don't apply too many here, as there is still one more color to add later. In addition to the camouflage, I will also be using this paint to base coat all of the webbing, pouches, gaiters, and also the helmet. Over the webbing, this green will give the appearance of a green blanco being applied over the khaki base color of the material. To paint the small strips of cloth or scrim inserted into the helmet netting, I'll be using some khaki. Next, we can continue with our camouflage pattern by applying some small patches of flat earth in the same way as we painted the Russian uniform patches earlier on. You can also paint this over some of the existing patches to create some variance in the pattern. Additionally, this paint can also be used to base coat any wooden areas on the model, such as the rifle or the entrenching tool handle. Over the skin of the face and the hands, we will be starting off with a base coat of beige brown. Next, we will be painting the black areas of the miniature, which include any black leather areas, such as the boots, and also any metal areas. However, instead of using a black paint, we will be using the very dark German grey instead. This is to allow the later wash to create some definition between the recessed and the raised areas. So now that all the base coats are completed, we can begin to apply some washes. These are great for boosting the visibility of details as they flow into the recessed areas, darken them down, and therefore create the appearance of shadows. Now the first wash that will be applied in this way is sepia wash, but I don't like to apply them straight out of the pot as they can be a little bit too strong. So we first need to water them down. Mix water into your wash until you have a consistency that's similar to what you see here. So now that your wash is thinned, we can next apply it across the whole model. Sepia wash is much more subtle and therefore won't darken down those lighter color areas as much as using a black wash would do at this stage. Once dried, you will find that those small details will stand out much more than they did before. Perfect for a small scale miniatures like these. Next, we want to apply some black wash thinned exactly the same way as we did last time. This time, however, isn't going to be an all overwash. It'll instead be much more precise, and I'll be applying it just to the areas that we painted with the German grey earlier on. Once the washes have been allowed to dry, we now want to add some highlights that will help to improve the level of detail. For these highlights, we will need a lighter colour than the base that we were painting over, and I'll be creating these by mixing in some stone grey with the base paints we've already used. Here you can see my mixture of roughly equal parts English uniform and stone grey, creating a lighter brown. Thinning down the paint with just a little water should make this task easier as the flow of paint should be much smoother than if you'd used it straight from the bottle. Using this mixture, lightly drag the tip of a thin brush along just the raised edges. This will create a small line of lighter paint along the raised area, helping to improve both depth and definition by contrasting with the darker shadows in the recesses. We're starting off with our English uniform mixture and applying it over the trousers. The smock will follow the same mixing technique as last time, but this time around we'll be using some green ochre with our stone grey instead. Apply this over the smock and don't worry about painting over the camouflage pattern 
as this will just result in a slightly worn and faded appearance to the fabric instead. Next, we want to apply a stone grey and Russian uniform mixture over any areas that were base coated with Russian uniform, like the helmet and the webbing. To give the scrim on the helmet a little more definition, apply some pure stone grey. You can also use this paint to give the boots a slightly reflective appearance too, by painting a thin line of stone grey across the toe. With a mixture of flat earth and stone grey, pick out the wooden areas of your model, such as the rifle stock and any entrenching tools. For the face and the hands, we'll be using some flat flesh rather than a mixture. Pick out the fingers and also some of the more prominent facial features like the cheekbones, nose and lips with this lighter flesh colour, paying particular attention over these fine details. The final step is to add some of the metallic paint, oily steel, to the metal areas that we base coated with German grey earlier on. Using this paint, we want to carefully apply it along only the edges. A thin brush will help with this. This edge highlighting technique will complete that dark metallic appearance. And here we have the completed British paratroopers, which were attached to their base before I added some textured paint and grass. For this tutorial, I took a lot of inspiration from the Colors of War book released to accompany Flames of War. It provides in-depth paint guides that covers an extensive range of World War II and Cold War era infantry and vehicles from multiple nations, eras, and theaters. It's definitely worth checking out and is a great reference point for any modern history wargamers. You can find a full list of all the paints that I use in this tutorial in the description below, along with any other equipment that I've used to create this video. If you enjoyed this video, do let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to keep up to date with all of my latest releases. And so the only thing left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.